The learning objectives for this chapter are Understanding the importance of good communication procedures at all levels in order to achieve safe and efficient ship operation. What is communication? Here is one possible definition. Transfer of signals and messages from one person to another with the purpose of creating an understanding, a particular meaning or a certain reaction from the other person. If no reaction is received, we are talking about one-way communication. We can say that we have three main methods for communication. These are writing, signs and signals, verbal communication, non-verbal communication. Using options 1 and 2 above can produce either a clear and straightforward message or an unclear or ambiguous message. According to statistics, as much as 70 to 80 percent of incidents and accidents at sea can be traced back to some kind of communication problem. Here are a few examples of possible causes for communication problems. Communication problems between personnel on the bridge because of different culture, age, experience, etc. Communication problems between bridge and engine personnel. Communication problems between ship and tugs. Communication problems between ships. Communication problems between ship and VTS. Communication problems between ship and ship owner or operator. Communication problems between ship and authorities. Nowadays, when only a few ships are sailing with a radio officer, the bridge has become not only the main communication centre for internal ship communication, but also the centre for external communication services. This means additional workload for the officer on watch. And good communication skill has become even more important for the navigation officer. Here are a few main elements for establishing good bridge communications. Mutual respect and confidence between the bridge team members. Professional job attitude, share of workload. Good theoretical knowledge. Relevant practice. Self-confidence. Since communication problems have been identified as factors which often play a major role in sea incidents and many other accidents, the communication aspect of ship operation has been addressed by many different bodies at regular intervals during the last century. The IMO publication, Among Seafarers the Standard Marine Navigational Vocabulary, is probably the best-known publication about this subject today. This publication has been updated several times and is a very good reference manual on the subject. In the late 80s, a new communication idea was presented to the maritime world, namely SeaSpeak. SeaSpeak is based on a world of experience. More than a thousand people from 26 maritime nations participated in the research and work that led to the production of the SeaSpeak Reference Manual and the SeaSpeak Training Manual. The central principle of SeaSpeak is that the receiver should be alerted to the time
type of message that follows at the very beginning of the message. This aim is achieved by the use of message markers. A message marker is a label which is attached to a message. This principle is entirely in agreement with the IMO recommendations and the main purpose of C-Speak is to reduce communication problems between ships, between ship and shore, between ship and VTS, etc. C-Speak messages are formed entirely from words within the English language. The total vocabulary used in C-Speak comprises three kinds of words and expressions. The vocabulary of general English, words in general maritime use, words in specialised maritime use. C-Speak has seven official message markers, however. In connection with special operations, additional markers may be used. These are the seven standard C-Speak message markers. Question Indicates that the following message is of interrogative character. Request Indicates that the contents of the following message are asking for action from others with respect to the ship. Information Indicates that the following message is restricted to observed facts. Intention Indicates that the following message informs other traffic participants about dangers. Warning Indicates that the following message informs other traffic participants about dangers. Instruction Indicates the following message implies the intention of the sender to influence the participant by regulation. Advice Indicates the following message implies the intention of the sender to influence the recipient by a recommendation. The officer on watch should have a general operator certificate. For ships operating only in Area A1, a restricted operator certificate is sufficient. The VHF watchkeeping range is 20 to 30 nautical miles, depending on antenna height. All ships must keep a continuous watch on the following channels. Digital Selective Calling DSC Channel 70 Channel 16 When practicable Channel 13 When practicable Medium frequency broadcasts will typically have a RT range between 150 and 250 nautical miles by day and a little more by night. DSC range can be expected to be 600 to 700 nautical miles. Ships must keep a continuous watch on the Navtex frequency 518 kilohertz when sailing in an area where this service is provided. Another frequency that must be monitored is the DSC frequency. 2187.5 kHz. High frequency broadcasts have an unlimited range. Ships fitted with HF must keep a continuous watch on the DSC distress frequency 84 14.5 kHz. At least one of the frequencies 4207.5 63, 12, 12, 5, 77, 16, 8, 0, 4.5 kilohertz, as appropriate to the time of day and position of the ship. Ships equipped with a ship Earth station, CES, must keep a continuous watch on the satellite appropriate to the ship's position. 
The range of satellite broadcast is unlimited, except in polar regions. A radio log containing records of all incidents connected with radio communications of importance to the safety of life at sea must be maintained. The following information is normally required in the radio log. A summary of communications relating to distress, urgency and safety traffic. A reference to important radio service incidents. Own ship's position should be noted at least once a day. Identities of other stations where contact has been made. Problems due to interference, congestion, etc. Unnecessary transmissions, obscene language, etc. Radio equipment should be tested at the interval stated by the manufacturer and in accordance with flag state requirements. Great care should be taken to avoid the transmission of false alerts when testing equipment. The officer on watch should be aware of the serious effects of operational and accidental pollution of the marine environment. All ships should make a report to the relevant authorities when an incident involving another ship is observed or an incident on their own ship involves the discharge or a probable discharge of oil or other noxious liquid substances which is above the permitted level has taken place a discharge or probable discharge of harmful substances in package form has occurred a discharge during the operation of the ship of oil or other noxious liquid substances in excess of what is allowed has occurred. The officer on watch should always be prepared for an emergency situation to occur. The officer on watch must familiarise himself with all emergency procedures. These procedures should be refreshed and retrained at regular intervals. The officer on watch should always remember that an emergency is not dangerous until it gets out of control. The most important thing to do during an emergency is to stay calm, think clear and follow relevant emergency procedures. The officer on watch of a ship which is likely to be engaged in the transfer of personnel or stores by helicopter should become familiar with the ICS Guide to Helicopter Ship Operations. You have now completed chapter 3. And all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. Bon voyage!